Okay, subscribers and viewers as well, because we have a lot of folks that simply want to stay off the radar and they don't subscribe. So I uh, want to give you a quick update on something. This machine behind me, the FAF 1222, posted it on Facebook as a machine that I was offering for sale a number of weeks ago. Gone. A local lady I met that her mother uh, no longer needed her FAF 130-6, went over to look at it, uh, needed some help, but I did purchase that machine from her. Her mom was the original owner. That's the way I like to buy my machines. I'm very particular. I like to buy machines that have been with that one owner. They haven't been passed around and jostled a lot. And while I was talking to her, she mentioned that she had another FAF machine, but it didn't have a free arm. So from another customer, local, original owner I was able to buy this FAF 1222 and I'm going to be delivering this to Carol today so if you see this up on Facebook and it says for sale not anymore it's gone so don't contact me about it a number of you contacted me when I first posted it and you're like oh that's so cool it's got a number of really awesome features that you find in typical machines that are thousands of dollars some of those features are the auto needle up, which I think is awesome. Uh, it also has a magnetic bobbin uh, winder. It's got just a number of awesome features, including some built-in engineered decorative stitches. Let me go ahead and open this lid and I'll zoom in and you can get a, a little bit of a peek of those because we might, we might, we might be doing a stitch off incorporating those today. So I'm gonna zoom in fairly close see if I can get there we go so these are really neat because oftentimes you know the Husqvarna's and other machines like that kind of try, I'm trying to get the camera release as well okay we sort of have it sort of kind of not here we'll do this that's good enough okay uh, some of you know some of the machines that you love that I love have cam cap capabilities. I mean, the Singers got have them, uh, like the Singer 401s, uh, 403s, and a variety of other ones. Uh, but you oftentimes have to have that cam available. These are engineered in, which I love. So by simply pushing a button, say this one right here, and making one knob adjustment, you're able to use any of these decorative stitches, and there's a total of 10 of them. And obviously, among some of these, you've got more of a blind hem stitch in that. So I, it, technically, that's not decorative, but it's still in that same bank of cam selected stitches. And then by pushing this little button right here, you can release that cam feature and resume normal sewing again. So I think that's fantastic. It really is. And you can hear the quality. This is a Western uh, German engineered FAF machine. So. It has a solid metal body to it as well. It's got those double uh, tooth dried belts like you'll see on a lot of the uh, uh, Husqvarna machines and some of the other FAF machines as well. It's engineered extremely well, but it has a hidden secret about this sound. That is not traditional steel or metal because you can see my magnet isn't reacting to it. That's aluminum. So this machine also has the added benefit of a lot of portability because it doesn't have that heaviness to it that some of the, the uh, solid steel and the forged steel machines have, and yet it's extremely sturdy and strong. It's engineered, what do I have to say? It's a FAF, and it's a vintage FAF, so it's engineered uh, like a tank, and it's extremely well made. Um, also, if I zoom out a little bit, I want to show you that magnetic bobbin. Now, some of you that have newer machines, your machine might actually have this feature, but for this machine back in the day to have this feature, I, I think it speaks volumes about how progressive uh, FAF is and how much ahead of the game they are because, you know, most of the time you're going to be snapping a bobbin on to wind a bobbin, right? Nope, not with this one. Watch this. Oh, and that's a strong magnet. Holy mackerel. That is a very, very strong magnet. And it's so easy to wind a bobbin on this. I'll demonstrate that when I drop off the machine. 
uh, to Carol today and get her all set up. One of the great advantages of being local is when I do meet customers local, I can go to their home, they don't have to drive anywhere, I can help get the machine set up, show them the basic features of the machine, and wow, talk about home delivery, that's the ultimate. Uh, so let me go ahead and zoom out a little bit. We're going to see if, if, number one, if I don't crash and burn here. You'll also see this dial right here. Uh, this dial is really easy to set with this uh, 1222, if I can get my camera to be cooperative. Okay. So right now you can see, and I'll kind of point it out as well so that you can kind of see what I'm seeing. Right here you've got basically a dial within a dial. Right now, if you look real close, this is going to be needle position. So if I turn this either to the right, now I've got left needle position, center needle position, and right needle position. And the significance of this needle position setting is for some of those decorative stitches that I showed you on top, it will have a quick reference right next to the stitch that you probably couldn't see in the video that will tell you where to set your needle position and then what setting beyond that to, uh, to set the, uh, the stitch length at. And then it's going to have a preset cam output but also just above this control center where you can adjust this here, this outer dial for the stitch length, you can do the same thing with a fine tuner setting for stitch pattern just above this control center. I'll kind of zoom into that as well just so you can see it. And then you can see you have obviously uh, zigzag and you've got stretch stitch settings and you've got a buttonholer and just a variety of other things you can do a quick set on here as well. That's the only real control center for basic sewing which is really convenient. You don't have to go all over the place like some of the machines and set you know this setting and that setting and that setting and that setting and then finally you can sew faff with this 1222 centralized it and made it real real easy which I love now the other control center I was talking about is just above it this little roller dial right here right now when I'm doing standard straight stitching I set it on that cool little bird symbol uh, but if I'm working with the decorative stitches and the utility stitches that are engineered in, I can very easily, to manipulate those patterns that are engineered in, I can rotate this anywhere from 18 all the way down to, I believe, 10. Yep, all the way down to 10. And you can totally change the, the look of that engineered built-in stitch pattern. So that's really cool, too. You don't have to settle for what they give you. You can manipulate it with this little roller dial right here once you have it set for that uh, decorative stitch. So that's another cool feature. This machine is way ahead of its time. It really is uh, an amazing machine. And if I zoom out, it's not going to be easy to show you how to thread this puppy. Uh, this is a little bit of a tricky one. You're going to kind of come off the, uh, the spool pin here, and then you kind of go along the side front of the face plate I'm going to kind of show you with my finger, and I'm not going to spin my screen around so if I, if I block something, but right over here you're bringing the thread around here. There's a slot that you can't see on the front of the faceplate, and then it's going to, instead of threading it, most commonly when you come off the top of a machine, whoops, maybe I should have locked that in place, huh? Let's see, okay. I'll come out a little bit too. That'll probably make it a little bit easier. There we go. Now I'm going to lock that in place. Actually, I probably should come out even further so that I can show you at least a quick glimpse of the, the way that threading is really kind of backwards on this machine. It's in reverse. Because typically, when you're coming to thread a, a standard machine, you're going to be coming off the top and then you're going to be threading typically from right to left and down, right? You're going to be going down, working your way from right to left and down to that needle. Not so on this FAF 1222. You're going to be coming off the spool pin on the back, and you're going to be coming across the front of this face plate where there's a slat, and that's actually your tension control is engineered into the lid of the machine out of view, 
so it can't it can't get bumped it can't get damaged it's actually protected underneath this aluminum cover and you slide the thread in there and then from there you're going to be going across here down around here up to the take up arm down to this thread guide right here that has a snap connector into it and then down to the needle and there's one more thread guide down there and this also this machine also has an auto threader as well that you can utilize if you want I'm not really an auto threader guy I'm gonna kinda of come out a little bit more and go down here also you can see I didn't specifically mention it I don't think but you'll see it in the stitch offs this machine also has a built-in walking foot as well so any of you that had inquired about it and now you know it's sold you're probably kicking yourselves and I don't blame you because this is an awesome machine but it also has an auto threader you can draw this down right on the front of the machine and you can thread the machine automatically as well I don't use them I just thread them the old school way and that's fine but here's your other thread guide right here when you get down near the needle and then because the bobbin is uh, on the front of this machine you're gonna go ahead and thread it from front to back so it's um, that's the only tricky part is along that faceplate edge where you actually slide the thread into a slat that is your tension control center uh, underneath this faceplate uh, and underneath this cover so that's a little bit of a tricky thing so but other than that it's a pretty straightforward machine if I take off this uh, free arm right here slide that out you can see we can access our bobbin uh, actually you can't see that so let me adjust the camera again we're doing a lot of camera adjustments here all right so there's where I was going to show you where you can access the bobbin not too hard you'll kind of pop it open and you can see right there we've got access to our bobbin and uh, let me make sure I don't catch my threads in there and then just to put the free arm back on like any other machine you're going to go ahead and grab those threads kind of control those threads when you're putting this on and just slide this into place and she locks in place real easily so so I, I just think this is a phenomenal machine it really is I mean between the the walking foot uh, the auto threader I mean the lightness of the machine because it's it's uh, engineered with uh, an aluminum construct and rumor had it back in the day that Pfaff was also experimenting with magnesium magnesium is another metal and it's actually lighter than aluminum and lifting this machine I'm almost a little bit curious if uh, while they promoted this as an aluminum based machine whether or not they did in fact uh, incorporate some magnesium into their construct of this so we may never know the answer to that but I'm curious I really am because it, it's such a lightweight uh, easy to handle machine uh, and that portability factor is really important if you're taking this to quilting classes and other things of that nature okay so let's finally focus on does this machine actually sew you bet it does and not only does it sew but it gets the job done so easily uh, I mean you wouldn't be overly impressed with that I mean it's a faff machine right you expect that but this is a a vintage machine that is from an earlier vintage era and as things move forward you would be a little bit more suspect because this is not a machine from the early 1930s or 40s it's probably a machine that was made in the 1970s maybe the late late 1960s there is a serial number on the back but FAF machines are notorious for having a challenge in dating them accurately you know and when you look at a machine like this that has features um, you know like the auto needle up and it's got a number of adjustments with the uh, presser foot that you can do as well and you'll see that when we do uh, stitching it's just amazing how they stay true unlike other makers to the quality factor of this FAF 1222 all right so the first thing I would like to stitch off and I'm gonna go ahead and move my light down a little bit so you can kind of see what I'm working with you already know what this is okay this is that US Army grade canvas you can see I've got this one that actually has the grommets attached to it as well and the original rope for tying off the shelter half and stuff you know this is the the real genuine article this is used in the US military 
So they make this stuff to stand up to every condition under the sun, weather changes, rain, mold, you name it. And we're not going to just stitch off on two layers of this stuff. We've got that built-in walking foot on Carol's machine. So I'm going to go ahead and fold it once. That gets us up to four layers. And I'm going to see if I can fold it one more time to get us all the way up to six layers. Look at that. All right, take a breath. It's going to be okay. All right. So I'm going to slide this underneath the presser foot, see if I can get her underneath there. And she slides in just fine, no difficulty whatsoever. I'm going to lower that presser foot down, and we're going to see how this FAF 1222 with a built-in walking foot does on six layers of U.S. Army grade canvas. Here we go. All right, and watch this needle feature. I love this. Isn't that cool? <laughs> All right. Well, you heard this machine. I controlled the foot pedal and the foot control, so I wasn't going pedal to the metal. And you be the judge. This is six layers of U.S. Army grade canvas and that stitch in every respect is absolutely perfect. The spacing, the formation, look at it from the side. Holy cow, we just went through six layers of U.S. Army grade canvas and this 1222 didn't even show hesitation, strain, or anything of that nature. And then when we look at the lock-in stitch, oh my gosh, you know what? It just doesn't get any better than that. Look at from the side again, the six layers of U.S. Army grade canvas that we just went through. Any of you that were thinking about getting this machine, sat on your thumbs, wondered about it, waited on it, you can envy Karen, Carol, excuse me, to the max now because Carol has this machine and she's looking to do not necessarily canvas, but denim, cotton, other things like that. Whatever she wants to sew with this FAF 1222, this machine is going to get the job done just like that. I mean, with no trouble whatsoever. Oh my gosh, what, a, what an amazing machine. Okay, let me zoom out a little bit because I want to show you how we can change from sewing heavy, heavy duty like we just demonstrated with this 1222 to sewing one of those decorative stitches that I talked about. Okay. So first of all, we're going to go over to the dial. I'll kind of come out a little bit, then we don't have to jostle this around too much, hopefully. All right. And that's going to be hard to see, and I get that, but I'll just explain what I'm doing. And that way, hopefully, uh, it still uh, makes sense. In case you happen to get one of these machines, you never know, right? But you're not going to get this one because it's Carol's. La da 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 da. All right. <laughs> so I'm going to open the top first of all so I can access those decorative stitches. I'm going to do um, almost like a shell style stitch and you won't be able to see it necessarily in the shot but I'm going to go ahead and push that button. Okay, so that one's down. And then I'm going to adjust this little uh, fine adjuster for the pattern control up here and I'm going to go down to about, oh, why don't we go down to around 13. Lucky 13. Okay, the only other adjustment that I'm going to make is this 13, let's see, for this particular stitch, it is recommending a center position, which we're already at, and then I've got to adjust the stitch length between 0 and 1 is what it's saying. So I'm going to go right about there. Hopefully that works. I don't have a lot of experience in working with the decorative stitches on this, but hopefully I did that right. Otherwise, oh well, it is what it is, right? And then I'm going to zoom in here by the needle. There we go. Just that a little bit. Okay, perfect. All right. So let's see what this machine does. We've set the decorative stitch. And again, you can manipulate these in any way you want. You don't have to go in a certain direction. Oh. You thought I was going to sew denim on this, didn't you? I'm going to put these grommets carefully around and we're going to go right through the middle of them with this stitch. All right, Carol, if you're watching this, don't panic. 
nothing bad happens, I hope. All right, so right down the middle of this heavy grade US Army grade canvas, and I'm gonna see, hopefully we can get a stitch output on that uh, pattern that I just set the machine for. So here we go, all right, enough talking. Action, Scott, action. All right, here we go. All right, I'm going to give it a little bit more gas now so you can see it's got power, but it also has speed. Here we go. <laughs> go, 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 go. All right, cease fire, buddy. All right, here we go. Oh, I love this machine. Oh, my gosh, this is so cool. This is so cool! All right, let me clip the threads and show you what we just what we just stitched off on. Again, we didn't have to add any cams to this; it already has them engineered in, and that's what we just sewed right there. Isn't that cool? Talking about finishing off edges or doing some decorative work with quilting, you can obviously make that tighter, make that uh, that stitching a lot. Uh, more tight than it is right there. I've got kind of a wide setting on it right now. We set it at 13 as far as the pattern uh, width of it. We could have made it a lot tighter, but look at the quality of that. You know, not only can it, can it sew uh, through six layers of U.S. Army grade canvas, but we just made a beautiful stitch as well. So it's got it's got everything. You know, again, any of you that were looking at this machine, when I post a machine for sale, they generally don't last really long and this one lasted longer than I thought, and it was just one of those coincidental things, if you will, where I met a local lady, and she had a machine that she was wanting to part with, and I wanted that machine. Again, it was the original owner, her mom had it, and then at the same time, I had a machine now that I could offer her, which was fantastic. I mean, it just doesn't get any better than that. It's like a double win-win. So let me zoom in on these stitches so you can see them a little bit closer. I know you've seen them from a distance. You've heard the machine run. I mean, it's just a phenomenal machine. This thing just runs beautifully. And if we kind of zoom in, let me see here. Zoom in on that. Look at that. And again, you can, you can modify that a, a bazillion ways. You can modify it a bazillion ways to make that tighter, longer, shorter. I mean, it's up to you. That's just the setting that I chose. And again, if we go over to that straight stitch we did through six layers of U.S. Army grade campus, look at that. Holy mackerel. <laughs> so let me zoom out. I was going to do denim too, but what's the point? I mean, really, what is the point? This machine just gets the job done so, so easily. I mean, it's just crazy. It's just crazy how easy this FAF 1222 makes it look. I mean, really. And on top of that, not only not only does it sew beautifully, but if you're at a, a, a quilting class, a sewing class, if Carol takes this out to one of those classes, does this have a traditional type foot control? Uh-uh. No way. It's got one of those huge pedals, a speed control pedal, almost like the Husqvarna 21s, those green machines, the 21A, the 19E, uh, I mean, all of those green machine series have that huge uh, speed control pedal. I've described it like a bus pedal almost. And that adds even the cool factor more to this FAF 1222. Never have I had a FAF 1222 on the channel before, so this video is going to be fun when people get a chance to view it because I know that there's got to be other 1222s out there but you don't see them very often and I've got another FAF uh, machine almost identical to the 1222 but it's got some other cool features that were incredibly progressive for the day and I've got to look down because it's down there on my shelf it's a 297-1 a 297-1 looks almost identical to Carol's machine but it's got even some other cool features engineered into it. So I may end up putting that up for sale as well. It's in my private collection, one owner. Uh, so if you're interested in seeing it, let me know, reach out, I'll send you pictures, and I can even post privately some stitch-offs of that machine as well. But if you wait, if you snooze, you lose. 
That's what happened to a lot of you with this incredible 1222. So let me put this foot control back down. And let me also challenge some of you that are out there right now. I posted because a lot of you jumped on the bandwagon and had fun kind of teasing me about my magnifier glasses. These puppies right here, when we were talking about Star Trek, right? And you, I mean, you just jumped all over that. You had a blast. I, I giggled like a little hyena when I saw some of the posts like, yep, that's Scott and, and this guy from Borg or, whatever, Bork or whatever it is. They look identical. And then I gave you an opportunity to win. I don't know where I even put it. I must have moved it somewhere. To move that really cool, to win that real cool uh, USS Enterprise pewter mobile. Only one person is taking advantage of that contest that ends on the 15th of this month. We only got like a week and you could win this super cool collectible 30th anniversary USS Enterprise and Janie. Janie, if you're listening right now, you're the only one. You can't lose. You posted, this is the type of machine that would be on the USS Enterprise. This is what they would do with it. You even gave me some cool pictures of the uniforms that they would be sewing with this machine. She can't lose at this point. No one else has jumped in and tried to post something to win that contest. What are you guys doing? You're obviously Star Trekky people out there. You're Trekkies, and no one has jumped into that contest. What's going on? Come on, get motivated. Jump in. You can't just give it away to Janie. Are you going to give it away to Janie? Janie's saying, yeah, yeah, I'll take it for free. That's fine. No one else wants to compete against me because I'm that awesome. Is she that intimidating that none of you Trekkies are going to jump into that contest? It's on Facebook. All you have to do is post what kind of sewing machine would be on the USS Enterprise, what would it sew, and then tell all your friends to like your post. And you can go head to head with Janie and try to steal that USS Enterprise away. I already showed it to you in that video. It's fantastic but no one has jumped into the contest. Come on, folks. Come on, drink an drink a energy drink or something to get motivated and get that posted. We're almost out of time. All right? That's my rant for today. All right, I'm good now. Whew. So, again, this 1222 is going to get delivered to Carol today. So keep watch for other machines that I'm going to offer for sale. I don't post them very much anymore. I used to do two or three a week when I was on eBay. I don't do it on eBay anymore for a variety of reasons. And I've shared those reasons with all of you. And you're like, yeah, yeah, that makes total sense. Private sales are so much nicer. You don't have to get into that competitive at the last second, the auction, and you think you've got it, and then boom, someone sneaks in and steals it away. I've got a variety of ways that you can buy awesome machines. And I even have that up to 120 days that you can pay it off with. So take advantage of reaching out saying, this is what I'm gonna sew. This is the kind of machine. This is the features I'm looking for. I want a machine that has a magnetic bob and I want it to be lightweight. I want it to have a built-in walking foot. I want it to do a variety of different things. Let me know and I'll match you with the perfect machine and you can take up to 120 days or you can pay it off right up front and grab that machine and start enjoying the benefits of a fully restored Scott machine. So it's totally up to you. I've got the machines, almost 200 available, but it really boils down to what your sewing needs are. So, so again, back to my original rant. Come on, Trekkies, get into the contest and don't let Janie just have it. Don't let her just have it. Come on, folks. Let's get motivated. Thanks for being a subscriber.